Today, in the fourth season, we really want to show you how stories are still being created. For example, the persistence and endurance of Yang Liwei, China's first taikonaut. But we also travel with an ordinary Chinese family as they experience the joy of a first trip across China on the high-speed railway. A vision that would have kept the thousands of visionary engineers and workmen focused during the construction phase of this major infrastructure project. Of course, we've also not forgotten the world of myth and ancient wisdom. We have one of the world's oldest love stories, herd boy and weaving maid, as well as the story of the mythical inventor of writing. Another of our stories also takes you to the moment when Li Bai had one of his moments of inspiration while another of our stories takes us back again to one of China's earliest poets, Qu Yuan. Enjoy the stories and enjoy learning to tell them in English. In the fourth season, we will show you how stories we 也有关于神秘的文字发明者的故事因为他们往往借物育人可以与诗歌、绘画、音乐等联系在一起就是试图理解那个文化背景的人他们对自然的美的发掘也许在中国人印象中这个短片故事将为我们详细介绍这种情感。好的,那我们现在从这本书把这个故事的英文版从头到底朗诵一下。D 
The orchids, which grow in a secluded valley on the lower reaches of the Yangtze River, do not have the beauty of the flutter of blossoming branches, but they have an air of elegance and literary dignity. Their fragrance is exuded whether there are people to appreciate them or not, and the frost does not wither them. The orchid truly bears the name Gentleman of Flowers. The story goes that when the poet Chu Yuan was banished by King Huai of Chu due to the machinations of the king's evil ministers, he took his beloved orchids and bamboo strip books and set up a school on Fairy Mountain. One day, the orchid goddess of Fairy Mountain, while floating on a cloud, happened to pass a thatched cottage. Inside, Chu Yuan was teaching a class, vigorously promoting righteous conduct for the kingdom of Chu. The goddess stood outside the window, quietly listening, particularly impressed by the poet's deeply felt patriotism. She knew that Chu Yuan had always loved orchids, so before she left, she endowed three orchids which Chu Yuan had planted under the window with supernatural power. One week later, Chu Yuan dragged his weak and sickly body to the school to teach another class. This time, the theme was how evil men had brought ruin to their country and people. Chu Yuan became so emotionally enraged that blood gushed out of his mouth and splashed on the orchids outside the window. The pupils were so upset at this that they had to wipe tears from their eyes. Early the next morning, the students were astonished to discover that the three orchids had become a huge cluster. When Chu Yuan breathed the fresh odor of the orchids, he became healthier. The students were overjoyed and inspired by the orchids, and they together planted more orchids all around the school. Marvelous to relate, on the very first day, these orchids produced sprigs. On the second day, soft buds. And on the third day, branches and leaves. On the fourth day, the buds began to sprout. And on the fifth day, each one put forth new stems. Chu Yuan led his pupils to plant orchids by a local stream and in mountain gorges. Soon the hills and valleys were filled with the scent of orchids. The farmers of the area smiled and said, 12 mu, one mu equals 0.7 of a hectare, of land is called one wan. It seems that Master Chu has planted three wan with orchids. We should call this place Orchid Land. After that, Three wan of orchids expanded to six wan, and then from six wan to nine wan, and the stream below Fairy Mountain got the name Jiu Wan Stream. The orchids growing beside Jiu Wan Stream increased in number year after year and filled Western Ling Gorge with their heady perfume. Their fragrance was wafted as far as Guizhou and perfumed half the sky over the kingdom of Chu. In the end, Chu Yuan left the mountains, nurturing a burning desire to serve his country in his breast. But, much to the surprise of the local people, on the first day of the fifth month by the lunar calendar that year, all the orchids which had been growing so luxuriously by Jiu Wan stream and around Zhilan village suddenly withered and died, leaving behind only a faint hint of their fragrance like sighs and tears. The villagers had a sense of foreboding and unease, as if something untoward had happened to Master Chu. Sure enough, two days later, there came the dire news that Chu Yuan, overwhelmed by a sense of grievance, had thrown himself in the Milor River and died. He had sacrificed himself for his country. The people were filled with grief, and the orchid goddess of Fairy Mountain wept till her eyes were swollen. Chu Yuan wrote many poems throughout his life in praise of orchids. In his masterpiece, Li Sao, we find a poem in which the orchid is called Fragrant Plant Beauty, signifying his patriotic, pure, and high-minded character. And because Chu Yuan's qualities were so much like that of the orchid, people in ancient times honored him as the orchid god. The moral of this story in the minds of the Chinese people, the orchid has always been a symbol of gentlemanly character and has thus been extolled down the generations. 
The pure nature of Chu Yuan was like that of the orchid, which exudes its fragrance only in the service of the people and does not wither despite the frost. He did not mingle with lowly men and was not tainted by them. He maintained his virtue, considering all others are muddy, only I am pure, just like the lofty nature of the orchid. Okay, now that we have come to the end of reciting this passage, let's do some recitation practice. Today we're going to look at how to handle a list or a sequence of events, how to use a rising pitch to create variation and to convey a sense of build-up. We'll first focus on one particular passage. 好的,现在咱们做一些朗诵上的练习。今天我们将学习处理连续事件的表达,用上高音调的方式来让表达多样化同时体现内容的递进。咱们来看这一段。Marvelous to relate, on the very first day these orchids produced sprigs, on the second day soft buds, and on the third day branches and leaves. On the fourth day, the buds began to sprout, and on the fifth day, each one put forth new stems. Chu Yuan led his pupils to plant orchids by a local stream and in mountain gorges. Soon the hills and valleys were filled with the scent of orchids. The farmers of the area smiled and said, Twelve mu of land is called Wan Wan. It seems that Master Chu has planted three wan with orchids. We should call this place Orchid Land. The first thing to notice is the way in which I emphasize the numbers at the beginning of each phase of the list. First, second, third, fourth, etc. You will then notice that after each number my voice rises slightly, so a sense of crescendo is created with the voice. In this way, we are using our voice to reflect the way in which the flowers are miraculously increasing so rapidly in number. Of course, we also need to reflect the excitement and beauty of this miracle with our voice. Okay, we're going to listen to the passage again in just a moment. 首先需要注意的是,我强调连续性数字的方式,比如first, second, third, fourth,等等。在每个数字后,你会注意到我的声音逐渐上高。一种坚强的感觉在我声音中被体现出来。Marvelous to relate. On the very first day, these orchids produced sprigs. On the second day, soft buds. And on the third day, branches and leaves. On the fourth day, the buds began to sprout. And on the fifth day, each one put forth new stems. Chu Yuan led his pupils to plant orchids by a local stream and in mountain gorges. Soon the hills and valleys were filled with the scent of orchids. The farmers of the area smiled and said, Twelve mu of land is called one wan. It seems that Master Chu has planted three wan with orchids. We should call this place Orchid Land. 好了,那么我们今天的课就到此为止。That's it for today's class. Bye for now.